Welcome. Welcome to my studio in lovely Idlewild, California. I'm very excited to have you join me today as we together create some amazing fabrics. We're going to create these fabrics using a gel press and um, Pebeo Set of Color Amazing Fabric Paints. So let me tell you a little bit about me. My name is Carla Leopold and I am an artist, also a teacher, and an art therapist. And so being an art therapist, I teach a little different than some teachers because I'm more concerned about the process than the product. I hope that you'll join me today on a wonderful adventure where we explore, we experiment, um, we try new things, and we learn about what we do. So in order to do that, the first thing we have to do is leave the critic outside the door. They're not allowed in the studio. And your inner child is here to play and enjoy and just have a really great time. So we're going to create this amazing fabric. And I'm really excited to see what you do and what you do with your fabric. Here's a little glimpse of what I've been able to do with the gel press and Pebeo. This is some of the beautiful fabric I've been able to create. This is another piece, much like what you're going to do, what I'm going to do today. This is, I've used this for a headband that I wear. And um, you'll note I have jewelry on that I've made with my um, fabric, painted fabric. My bracelets are from my painted fabric. Um, and the other night I used my fabric and made this really lovely stole bag. So there's the hand-painted fabric sewn into something. So it's really perfect for so many things. You could use it for quilting squares, but you're going to have your own ideas and that's what's going to be most exciting about this. Now to get started, we don't need a lot of things. Um, so it's not going to be very expensive to do this either. So the first thing we need is our gel press plate. And I use the 8x10 because that's going to fit my fabric perfectly. I use, I start with three colors. I tell you to use three colors because if we get much more than that, we're going to get mud. You'll see at the beginning of the video, I will list, list these materials. And then I use, I don't count these as colors because they're lighteners. There's a glitter and there's a pearl essence, which is my favorite. And let's see, what else? Um, I have cotton fabric. This is 100% cotton and I wash it and I iron it before I use it. It just makes it crisper and nicer to work with. And to get the strips of fabric I need, I just rip the fabric. I love the frayed edges. So this is ripped about 10 inches wide. The other thing I have on my table is a brayer and a popsicle stick to spread the paint around. And then I just have some basic stencils. These I've had for years. Just a basic polka dot, whatever you've got. Or if you don't have any stencils, that's fine too. So I'm excited to see what you do. I'm excited to see your color palette because it will be different than mine. And that's what makes this project so great. The first thing I do before I start is I put on a hand guard because you'll see in the video my hands are a little bit of a mess. And with this, it makes cleanup very easy. Um, and the paints are water soluble, so that makes it easy to clean up. And the gel press is super easy too. So let's uh, get started. And so I want you to join me on a playful fun. Let's go do it. So we're back, ready to go. I've got my setup. I use a piece of wax paper underneath my gel press. It just makes cleanup easier. I've got my fabric. I've got my stencils. I've got my paint. And um, a couple little tools that I might need for marking. So let's go. I like to talk about to my students about using the number three a lot. So remember I talked about three paints. I kind of I don't count these two as the gold and the white as a color, but we've got the three colors going here. We've got the yellow, the pink, and the blue. 
and I'm going to have a main color and so I also talk in terms of daddy bear, mommy bear, and baby bear so those means I'm going to use pink as my daddy bear so that means I'm going to use more pink than the other colors and so and very simply I'm going to pour it in three places and when I pour it in three places I'm going to pour what I call my daddy bear which is my biggest one then I'm going to do mommy bear and then I'm going to put baby bear someplace else so we'll put her over there and I'm going to wipe off my lid and I'm going to put the lid back on the paint because that's really important because spilling a whole bottle of paint is not a fun thing to clean up so then I'm going to use my yellow and it is you can shake this a little um, or stir it you don't want to shake it too hard because you don't want bubbles so once again I'm going to do the biggest daddy bear I'm going to do a mommy bear around in here and then the baby bear. Wiping off my lid and putting the top back on. And then I'm going to use the blue. Shake it a little bit. And sometimes I have a tendency to use too much paint. So we're going to have to see. I'm guessing already that I probably have a little quite a bit of paint on here. Now this is my glitter so there's my daddy and there's my mommy and let's put some baby over here. Clean off the lid, put the lid back on. So that's looking pretty exciting. And the white paint that I chose is glitter. So and I like glitter, I like pop, I like a lot of excitement today so let's use a little bit of white because that's gonna make my pink a really pretty color wipe off the rim put the lid back on and then one of my favorite paints of all is the pearlescent paint looks fabulous on fabric <laughs> can't get the lid off <laughs> okay so Hold on just a bit. So I've got a pearlescent blue handy, so we'll use that. Looks kind of pink to me, but it says it's pearl blue. So I probably should have checked my lids before I started this demo. So we'll wipe my lid. Okay, so I have quite a bit of paint on there. I if I use a brayer, I use it very sparingly, very lightly, because I don't want to. I like my colors not to get too messed up, so I might start using the popsicle stick that I use sometimes and spreading my paints all the way to the edges. Um, but it doesn't hurt to leave some blank spots either, because that looks lovely on your fabric. You just don't even necessarily need to cover it all up. So let's see, if I was to use a brayer over here, let me show you, I would use it very, very lightly and very sparingly because it mixes the colors up a lot and I rather like my colors to be a little bit pure. So, um, and then I'm gonna go in both directions. So, now when I look at that, I'm looking at, I don't like that big blob of pink in the middle. So I'm not sure what's going to happen if we just take some of that out of there. Or I could put, um, and I'm going to fool around and put a couple lines in there with my stick. Um, a little bit of texture. I could even scrape out some of this. And so, I still have a lot of pink in that middle space. 
So I think I'm going to put a little bit of pearlescent blue in there and, and just kind of, um, I'll probably use my popsicle stick and just put, just to kind of dot it around. There, that kind of breaks that pink up a bit. Maybe I shouldn't put that stick back in there. I kind of made a mess out of the color in there, but sometimes I I have a tendency to be extremely organic and not as that necessarily as neat as I could be. But I have to remember, like I told you, we're having fun, we're playing, and the little girl in me says, I think we're ready to print. No, I'm thinking, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, I've got my stencils here, and I can put them on on the second round, but I, the dotted stencil is one of my favorites, that one. So, and I don't like to put it, space it, like right in the middle. I like to do a little corner or an edge or kind of break it up. Hmm. I want to cut it in half, but that's not going to work because I need to keep this stencil. So I'm just going to put it over here like this. Now, okay, here's where we're going to look and see about our magic. I am going to put my fabric on. Now, as I'm looking at this, I try and very carefully space it so I'm laying it over the plate. And then, oh, Remembering that I like to use a piece of paper over the top of the fabric because the paint seeps through the, pap the fabric. Or you could even use another piece of fabric because you're going to get some paint. And then I'm going to start from the middle and I'm going to lightly move it out. And you can see the paint is coming up through there and we're going to get a a little bit of an idea of what this is going to look like on our paper. So let's see what we've got on our paper. Ooh, we've got some bright, that's the paper. So my guess is we're going to like this fabric. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, I'm going to put it right over here and take a look at that. Can you see that? I think I told you I thought I put too much paint on there. It kind of looks like I put too much paint on there. But what did I tell you? It's only a piece of fabric. And we may find out that we're going to like that too much paint on there at some point in time. So I am going to do a second print. And I'm going to try and break up this little bit of bright pink in that glob I've got. As I look at the first one, I'm thinking, hmm, there's a lot of bright pink in here, but I guess I thought I liked that bright pink. Okay, so we're just going to move the fabric on down, and we're going to lay it over the top. And this time, once again, I'm going to use the same piece of paper and see what we get. And we're going to go over the top of it. Oh, I like that. Give us some really great texture on our paper. So let's see what we've got on our fabric. Oh, that's really interesting. Can you see that? So, now one of the things that I like to do is make sure that my colors go all the way to the edge. So there's a lot of color on this. So I'm going to put some of that all the way to the edge. And yeah, there's color there. And that way it goes all the way to the edge. 
Ah, I like that. And I'm going to put some color all the way to the edge there. Still not liking that big glob of pink on there. So I'm going to take a paper towel and I am going to pull some of it off. And that's making me happier because there's colors underneath there. So where it's pulled, I'm pulling some of that color off so we can see what we've got. So I think this piece is called fluorescent. We've got fluorescent colors, we've got some glitter. Now I'm going to use that little paint I pulled off and move it around in the rest of that fabric. There's a lot of blue there. And so you can see that, can't you? So that's what I've got so far. And at this point in time, I'm going to heat set that. And by heat setting that, I just very lightly um, use the heat gun. I don't want to burn the fabric and my heat gun is pretty hot. So I'm going to just take the heat gun and I'm going to go over this very um, with a quick, quick brush of the heat gun and um, we'll continue on. I'm going to go get the heat gun. I'll give you, I'll show you a little bit how I do that. And I'm looking, I still got these really wonderful stencils here. Um, hopefully they'll be here when I get the heat gun done and we can use that paint. Or, you know what, how about putting it on some paper. So we're going to do that. We're going to put this on paper. We're gonna, don't don't want to waste any of that paint. Ooh, that's lovely. We're going to put the stencil on there. Um, because there's paint on that stencil. Ooh. Put it over here. Put it over here. And then... I've still got paint on my brayer, so I'm going to put that over there. And so, not only do I have this lovely piece of fabric, I have some beautiful prints that I can work with and use in coll as collage papers. So I'm going to put that up there. And we're going to heat gun. The next thing we're going to do is heat set the fabric. By heat setting the fabric, I use a heat gun. Um, your craft heat gun is fine. And if you do not use a heat gun, you can use your iron and turn it over on after it dries. Turn it over on your ironing board, put a cloth down, and iron the back. And you have it heat set, ready to go for a project. And with that, you can stick it in the washing machine. And after you wash it, the integrity of the fabric will stay and it will be just as beautiful as the day you painted it. So let's take a closer look at the fabric we created. One of the things that I think is important is for us to learn about what we've done and what we like and what we don't like. So I tell my students that their job is to find three things they like about what they've created and then they can go into hmm, what they could improve next time. So as I look at my piece, I know that I like this side. I like the airiness. I like, oh, I love this blue over here. Um, I like the colors, the glitter. And so if I was to recreate some more of this fabric, I'd look to leaving those more open spaces and um, and it makes me happy. So remember what I said I had too much pink? Well here it is. Um, I'm glad I blotted it out because you can see that underneath color which is really lovely. So when I look at this it looks like a big celebration. So when I think about what I might do with this I think about I think flags would be great. Um, I think how about napkins for a party? Because when you wash this after you've heat set this fabric 
you can wash it and it's going to look like the day we created it. So I am excited for you to go play and um, see what you do. And thank you so much for joining me today.